Hello and welcome to Testing the Theory. Today we'll be looking at Air Launch to Orbit, specifically DARPA's Airborne Launch Assist Space Access. Air Launch uses standard or modified aircraft as launch platforms for rockets. In reality, very useful for bypassing the lower atmosphere and increasing the mass efficiency of rocket stages, and KSP not as useful due to only having one craft active in the atmosphere at a time. We're looking at some of the concept art from DARPA's ALASA program, which was terminated but not abandoned at the end of 2015. DARPA are currently focused on the practical application of the dinitrogen monoxide acetylene monopropellant fuel proposed for the first stage of the ALASA rocket. There is very little in the way of information about the second stage, but I assume it uses the same fuel as the primary rocket stage. One of the reasons I found this specific air launch method so interesting is the launch vehicle, an unmodified F-15E. The only current operational air launch program, Orbital Science's Pegasus program, uses a modified Lockheed L-1011. For comparison, the Lockheed has a maximum takeoff weight of around 225 tonnes and the F-15E is 36 tonnes. Alasa's concept is focused on releasing microsatellites of less than 45 kilograms into low Earth orbit, whereas the Pegasus has a maximum payload of 435 kilograms. Pegasus has been a commercially available launch platform since 1990, and the reason it has that maximum weight is due to the fact that at the time, smaller satellites were often ineffective for purpose. Current technology is making smaller and more effective satellites cheaper. Manufacturing of these types of technologies has become cheaper, but the cost of getting them into space has remained relatively high. The estimated price of a Pegasus launch was $56 million in 2014. A LASA was proposed to cost $1 million per launch. And the reason it was so much cheaper is the fact that the F-15 can be launched from smaller runways, is unmodified, and won't require specific maintenance that the Lockheed L-1011 does. The design of the Alasa system posed some serious difficulty in transposing into KSP, as the engines are mounted at the bottom of the second stage. In reality, this was supposed to be because they powered both the first and second stage, though the concept animation DARPA released for the Alasa system does not present it this way. The front-mounted engines on the first stage provide more problems in KSP than they would in real life, as the centre of mass was actually much closer to the centre of thrust in my version than the Alasa version would be. This meant that as the rocket flew and lost fuel, the COM was moving to a point where the rocket itself wanted to flip. I remedied this by making the third engine slightly smaller and reducing the thrust. I then adjusted the gimbal range so that with an ideal ascent profile, the rocket would tip but not flip as it gained altitude. The sweet spot turned out to be around 70% of the normal gimbal range. Something I was unable to discern during my research is whether or not the first stage of the rocket is reusable. In the articles I read, it is unclear whether the reusable portion that is referred to is the plane or the rocket. If anyone knows, and knows how recovery was proposed, please comment below. Reusability is something I deem very important in space exploration, and I designed this platform to be fully recoverable in theory. The first stage is light enough to be splashed down with two parachutes, and the second with just one. I may release a video where I show all the stage recovery simultaneously if people want to see it. Now back to testing the theory. This launch platform in KSP works fantastically, and exactly as it was meant to in real life with one caveat. Only the last stage can be successfully recovered without mods. The other moderate issue is size. This is a one ton payload, and anything larger probably would have been practically impossible for such a small aircraft. There is, however, the option to build something more like the Pegasus, and with a much larger aircraft, it may even be able to get small landers into orbit with only one intermediate stage. However, as I mentioned, the plane and the first stage are always lost. This is something I've always considered lacking in stock KSP, and is pretty much vital to the efficiency of your space program early in a career game. I personally hope it's something that squad address, but there are always ways around these issues. The particular way around I would recommend is the flight manager mod, which allows you to jump around in time, creating save points during staging, which is perfect for recovering aircraft user staging. There's also Stage Recovery, which recovers stages based on having enough parachutes to slow a spent stage to a safe terminal speed. I'll put links to both in the description. Thank you to Jelly Pickles for suggesting Alasa, and if you have anything you'd like to see me test, please leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed watching me test a theory, and I'll see you soon for more.